Welcome back to the Prentice Hall Biology Textbook. Today we'll be covering Chapter 8, Photosynthesis. Uh, sec section section 8-1, Energy and Life. Okay, so energy is defined as the ability to do work. And there are two main uh, organisms in uh, what we define as the ecosystem. There's autotrophs and heterotrophs, which we've talked about before. So plants and some other types of organisms are able to use light energy from the sun to produce food, making them autotrophs. They make their own food. And heterotrophs obtain energy from the food they consume. Okay, chemical energy and ATP. So energy comes in many different forms. Light energy, chemical energy, heat, and electricity. So high energy chemical bonds are broken and release energy and then become low energy bonds. So adenosine triphosphate, ATP, is the base chemical compound that cells use to store and release energy. And it consists of uh, adenine, a five carbon sugar called ribose, and three phosphate groups. Okay, storing energy. So ADP, adenosine diphosphate, is a compound that has two phosphate groups instead of three. It's uh, similar to ATP. And cells store energy in the form of uh, phosphate groups in ADP, which converts it, to a converts it to ATP. So then by releasing the chemical bonds between the second and third phosphate, they, uh, it releases energy. And so the characteristics of ATP make it exceptionally useful as the basic energy source of all cells. So using biochemical energy. So uh, cells carry out active transport with the energy they get. At, and using sodium potassium pumps, which pumps sodium out and potassium in, produces movement in cells. However, it's not good for storing energy. So here we can see the structure of ATP. Here we have the uh, five carbon sugar. Here's uh, adenine. Ad yeah, adenine. And here is the three... Uh, phosphate groups. And so um, with ADP, it's only these two phosphate groups. Okay, 8-2, uh, photosynthesis and overview. So photosynthesis is the way plants can make their own energy. So plants use sunlight to convert water and carbon dioxide into high energy carbo carbohydrates, sugars and starches, and oxygen. So investigating photosynthesis. So there are three main experiments that led us to uh, the, our knowledge about photosynthesis today. Van Helmont's experiment was um, he planted a sapling in dirt. He weighed the dirt and weighed the sapling before. And then by watering it for five years, he then measured the mass of the dirt and tr tree at the end of it and saw that it, it had gained... Uh, mass and he determined the mass gain was from uh, water. So what he didn't take into account was uh, the uh, carbon dioxide the plant takes in which does in fact add weight to it. So then there was uh, Priestley's experiment. So he first had a candle and then placed a gas jar, a glass jar over the candle and watched the candle dim and go out. And then um, he then placed a a small plant in the glass jar and then lit the candle in and waited for a day and then when he lit the candle in the glass jar again he saw it remained lit for longer because there was more oxygen in the glass jar that had been produced by the plant and uh, Jan uh, Ingenhaus showed the effect observed by Priestley was only when the plant was uh, exposed to light so it didn't work when there was no light so these experiments uh, led to the work led to work by other scientists who finally discovered that in the presence of light, plants transform carbon dioxide into water and water into carbohydrates and also release oxygen. So next we have the uh, photosynthesis equation. So we have six carbon dioxides plus six water molecules, along with light energy, uh, turn uh, transform into a carbon or a excuse me a sugar and six oxygen molecules. And so photosynthesis, and next we talk, uh, then lights and pigments. So plants capture the energy of sunlight, and in addition to water and carbon dioxide, photosynthesis requires light and chlorophyll, a molecule in chloroplasts. And then this is the light spectrum and visible spectrum. So plants uh, take in different, we know that the although the light looks white to us, it's actually a combination of all the colors. And so plants gather the sun's, energy, the sun's light with uh, absorbing molecules called pigment. And the principal pigment is chlorophyll. So there are two types, chlorophyll A and B. 
and this absorbs light well in the blue, violet, and red ends of the spectrum, but it doesn't absorb green as well, so that's why we see plants as green. It's reflecting the green light. And sunlight is transferred into electrons in, chlor in the chlorof chlorophyll molecule, raising the energy levels of molecules. Okay, next, 8-3, the reactions of photosynthesis. So inside a chloroplast, we briefly talked about chloroplasts in chapter 7, but here's a more uh, in-depth in depth, uh, explanation. So the thylakoids are the sac-like photosynthetic membranes. The granum is a stack of thylakoids, and then proteins in the thylakoid membrane organize chlorophyll and other pigments into clusters known as photosystems. And these photosystems are the light collecting units of the chloroplast. And then also in the chloroplast, we have the stroma and the lumen. The stroma is outside of the thylakoids and the lumen is inside the thylakoids. Okay, so there are two parts of the photosystem reactions of photosystems. There's the light dependent reactions and then the light independent reactions. The light dependent reactions occur in the granum and it takes in H2O and light to produce uh, ATP, NADPH, and uh, oxygen. And the light independent reactions, also known as the Calvin cycle, occur in the stroma and it uses ATP, carbon dioxide, ATP, oh, so ATP1s, carbon dioxide, and NADPH to produce sugars. And it turns ATP and NADPH back into ADP, uh, ADP and NADP plus. Okay, electron carriers. So electron carriers are high energy electrons. So there are high energy, ATP and NADPH are high energy electrons, uh, electron carriers. So the high energy electrons in the chlorophyll are then carried in, into the uh, light independent reactions. So NADP plus accepts and holds two higher energy electrons along with a hydrogen ion. And this converts it into NADPH. And it's a uh, one way in which some of these energy of sunlight can be trapped in chemical, chemical form. And that car uh, the NADPH carries electrons to chemical reactions elsewhere in the cell. Okay, light dependent reactions. So light dependent reactions require light, obviously. And they produce oxygen gas and convert ADP and NAD plus into energy uh, carriers ATP and NADPH. So there are five main steps to the light independent reactions. So the first step is when pigments in photosystem 2, which we can see here, this is photosystem 2, and this is the pigment P680, um, absorb light. And it's called photosystem 2 because it was discovered after photosystem 1, and they couldn't go back and change it. So the light energy is, is then absorbed by electrons, and uh, which increases their energy, uh, energy levels. So the electrons come from water molecules. It splits the hydrogen and the or it splits the hydrogen and the oxygen into two oxygen molecules and one hydrogen ion. <clears throat> okay, step two. The high energy electrons move through the electron transport chain, also known as the uh, or in the electron transport chain, from photosystem two here into photosystem one here. So you can kind of ignore all of this. This is just the process in which the electrons are transferred. And then energy from the electrons are used by the molecules in the electron transport transport chain to transport H plus ions from the stroma in the inner thylakoid from the stroma to the inter, inter inner thylakoid space known as the lumen. Next, pigments in photosystem 1 use energy from light, once we see that here, and this pigment is P700, to re-energize the electrons, and NADP plus picks up these high energy electrons along with the H plus ions from the water molecule, and it becomes NADPH. Okay, step 4. As electrons are passed from the chlorophyll to the NADP plus, more hydrogen ions are pumped across the membrane. And the inside of the membranes fill up with positively charged hydrogen ions, and the outside of the membrane becomes negative while the inside is positive. And this difference in charge provides the energy to make ATP. So because the H plus ions cannot travel across the membrane directly, there's a membrane protein called ATP synthase, and this spans the membrane and allows H plus ions to pass through it. As they pass through the uh, ATP synthase, the protein rotates like a turbine, and as it rotates, ATP synthase binds, uh, 
ATP synthase binds ADP and a phosphate group to produce ATP. So it adds the third phosphate group onto ADP, producing ATP. And then the light dependent reactions produce ATP, NADPH, and oxygen. Next, we have the light independent reactions, also known as the Calvin cycle. So the simplest form of this is it uses ATP and NADPH to produce sugar. And it's named after uh, Melvin Calvin, an American scientist who discovered it. So it's four steps. So the first step is that there are six CO2 molecules that uh, enter the cycle from the atmosphere. And they combine with six five carbon molecules to produce 12 three carbon mo molecules. So that's a little confusing. So then the 12 three carbon molecules are then converted into higher energy forms. Energy comes from ATP and higher energy electrons from NADPH. So that means they just, they are on the next energy level. And then two of the 12 three carbon molecules are removed from the cycle. And these are used to produce sugars, lipids, amino acids, and other compounds needed for plant metabolism and growth. Those are the, that's the sugar that is produced from the Calvin cycle. The remaining 10 carbon, 10, the remaining 10 three carbon molecules are converted back into six five carbon molecules. And these combine with these six carbon dioxide molecules to start the process all over again. So basically it uses six molecules of CO2 to produce a single six carbon sugar molecule. And this and the light dependent, dependent reactions work together to produce sugar and oxygen. Okay, next we have, oh, sorry, we have the factors affecting the uh, photosynthesis. So a shortage of water can slow or even stop photosynthesis, and then plants with uh, that are in deserts develop ways to conserve water. Temperature, so photosynthesis depends on enzymes that function best between 0 and 35 degrees Celsius. And if they're not in these temperatures, photosynthesis will slow down or stop. And then intensity of light plays a role in affecting photosynthesis. Okay, key concepts. What is the ultimate source of energy for plants? Uh, what is ATP and what is its role in the cell? What did Van Helmont, Priestley, and Ingenhaus discover? Describe the process of photosynthesis, including the reactants and products. Why are light and chlorophyll needed for photosynthesis? And last, summarize the light-dependent and light-independent reactions. All right, that's all for Chapter 8.